Okay, it looks like we've got quite a few people on, so I'm going to go ahead and get for get started. Uh, first of all, does anyone have uh, anyone having any issues with the WebEx? Can everyone see this screen that says that? Yes, good. Um, Folks, going to dive right in. Uh, the first thing I want you guys to know is I'm going to try and keep this pretty casual. So if you have questions that come up as we're going, um, please let me know. Uh, we can stop and talk about the topics that we that I'm on uh, since we're going to kind of move through a, a few of them. The other thing I wanted to tell you is that I did schedule two more of these, one for October and one for November, just to kind of if you have additional questions, if there are changes I wanted the venue, just so that we could have space to talk about data, um, specifically Teradat. Um, so first things first, I'll introduce myself. My name is Sarah Burnett. I am, as of June, I'm the, data, the AIM data manager. You've really heard my name um, through one of the other venues. Um, the big thing is just that since I'm taking a lot off of Sarah Lamagna's plate data-wise. She's uh, free to transition more to a reporting role. Uh, so she's going to be really turning her focus to reporting analysis. Trying to work through some of those challenges. So if you have questions that relate more to data reporting or data analysis, she's going to be your go-to. So just moving forward, the things I wanted to talk about is first to give you guys kind of a Teradat walkthrough. Uh, first of all, for the people of you who haven't seen it, I wanted to just show you what it is. I wanted to go over a little bit what's changed since the initial release and then give you guys the basics on how you get to Teradat. Um, I'm going to tease the AIM Geocortex site, which is coming this fall. And other things that are on the horizon, and then go over questions. But like I said, if you guys have questions as we're going, uh, just let me know. Um, so the first thing I wanted to just kind of go over is what exactly is Teradat? Teradat, uh, the name comes from Terrestrial AIM Database, and it is a uh, an enterprise database here at the NOC that stores the DEMAs. So field crews still use as the field collection tool. And then at the end of the season, after some localized QAQC is at the field office for those who collected the data, and then it will move to the state office, and then it will come to the NOC, and then we will ingest it into an enterprise SP database. And that we can serve the data out back out to you guys. Um, the data is each indicator for each plot calculated, so it's not the raw data. It's the sum is calculated data for each point. Um, one of the benefits of Teradat is that we can serve it out through a feature service, which means it's served in ways that can be ingested in multiple devices. Uh, up on the screen, I have our Geocortex site, which ingests the features, and you can also use just ArcMap to look at the feature service and export your data if you want. Um, good thing about Teradat are we do some of the calculations for you. So the core indicators are calculated by plot. Uh, we also calculate some of the supplemental indicators like IRH and uh, the soil stability. Uh, it's going to help us with data calls. So hopefully annually at the end of field season, you can shoot us your DEMA. And when Washington calls about every five minutes to want data for something, you guys don't have to be part of that. We can just deal with that here at the NOC for you. Since it's centralized storage uh, means that it's in one place, that you guys don't have to do that legwork for storing these core indicator cal calculated core indicators. So it means we can use the data at broader scales than just your field office, which I think as we move forward with SageGrass implementation, all that's going to become more of a priority. So that we move forward on Teradat, I want to stop and take a minute. Sarah Lamont, you worked so hard getting this up and running, and it's really exciting. So uh, it's a lot of work, and it's really it's a really fruitful because it's a really awesome thing. 
Teradot has changed a little bit. The first iteration of Teradot came out in January. Probably a lot of you guys are on that first uh, webinar. The changed are really in details in the attribute table. Some of the uh, ways that we're calculating the indicators have not the ways, but the indicators that we're actually calculating have changed. We have split out invasive species and non-invasive species in all the functional groups. So for each functional group, there's going to be a non-invasive and an invasive. For example, non-invasive annual form, invasive annual form, non-invasive printed grass. Get the idea. Uh, the other thing that we've done is we've added an, a massive more suite, a massively bigger suite of remote sensing indicators. So basically, everything that we're calculating for terrestrial, we're calculating for remote sensing. And for your guys' purpose, what this means is that we're calculating a whole bunch of indicators for any hit, which we're calling the terrestrial aim data. And then first hit, so when you're looking at it from above, the first thing that you hit, we're calculating those indicators as well because those are the useful um, in for remote sensing. We can use them nationally. You guys can use them at the state. Uh, I think the remote sensing indicators are going to be really interesting and exciting, and hopefully we'll get a lot of really cool products coming out of there. Uh, the other thing that changed is we added a primary key that's a concatenation of the plot key and then a date load into the database. Uh, and the reason this is important is a couple of ways that you can export the data back out of Teradat and use it at the local level. And anytime you want to do a join between uh, like a spatial and a tabular data set, the primary key is going to be the way they do that. And um, if you have questions about that or want to dive into that a little bit more, more, give me a point I can I can keep through what I mean more. Uh, so one thing I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna kind of start walking you through that, what it looks like and uh, the demo. I want to first say everything I'm gonna talk about is in the Teradat instruction manual, which was as an attachment to your uh, so the site is also located on the AM point under the implementation folder. So if you lose me or if I'm talking too fast, uh, just go there and find the exact same information. So this is what Teradat looks like um, when you open it up. Um, it's all the point data. Um, we have some symbolization that um, is in but if you zoom to your level, you'll see all the point data um, for each, and for each of the indicators. So if you want to turn these on and off, you'll see different indicators symbolized. We have it in ArcMap. Uh, the way that you get it into ArcMap is pretty simple. You're going to go to the Geospatial Gateway site. And if any of you guys haven't been here, I'll put a link for this on the invite as well. So consult that because in addition to that, you can get a lot of the other uh, the data sets that uh, the BLM publishes. So there's a lot to see on here. Um, you get to this geospatial gateway page, you can scroll down to data navigation and open the vegetation. Sign, and then there we are, the BLM Terrestrial AIM. So if you open that site, um, this is basically a one-stop shop for Teradat. So in addition to Teradat, you can get our metadata, which uh, if you have any questions about any of the fields that you see when you look at the uh, attribute tables, information is in the metadata. If you have any questions about who to contact, if, just general information about the data set that's going to be in the metadata. Um, so the way you get the data from this site is you just click on BLM National AIM Teradat. Say, open this site in Internet Explorer because it will not work in Chrome, which is a lesson I learned the hard way. And Vanessa Stepanek wanted me to let you guys know that if you're having trouble with any of these pages, um, contact her and she can get it up and running or tell you 
what's going on, like clear your cash, which is one thing she had to me. So um, this is a really good page to know, and it's a really easy way. So if you click on the BLM name, it's just going to pop up this question, and you can either open it, which will open it right in ArcMap, or save a layer to your local machine, and you can use that layer anytime you want to get to tear it up. The cool thing about that is that you then it So you save the layer to your local machine, but that's basically pointing back to our SD database. So as we change it on the back end, it will automatically pop up in your MXP. First of all, does anyone have any questions about that process? There are other ways you can get Teradata into ArcMap, which are detailed in the instruction manual, and I think are probably more easy to understand looking at the page. So look there if you want a different way. And if you're having trouble, please give me a call. I'd be glad to walk you through how to get this load ArcMap. Um, so instead, we have uh, all of the indicators here are symbolized so that you can just pop them up and look at uh, your computer. One of the thing, one of the first things you may want to do is go up to Geospatial Gateway and download the admin boundaries. This is going to give you state boundaries and field office boundaries, district boundaries, uh, and may make it look a little bit more user friendly. It kind of runs slow, so I may have just in everything. <laughs> um, this internet. Um, but there is one good thing about the geospatial gateway is that it has all of these additional layers. So uh, here it pops up the district and field office boundaries, so you can see where I'm a little bit better. Uh, all indicators here are summarized. We have in, lots of any hits and lots of first hits. Like I said, those are kind of the distinction between remote sensing and not remote sensing data. A lot of the things that are symbolized here are actually pointing back to the same to the same layer to the same feature class, and will have the same attribute table. Um, you can tell if you open the attribute table. the same massive table in here, which has, for each point you're looking at, it has all of the indicators summarized. Um, so there's all the non-invasives and the invasives. So the table, which is why we thought you guys might like just having it symbolized in the list. You can also look at it here, basically however you would have Use ArcMap, you can use this data set, including exporting it out of Teradat onto your local machine and doing analyses there if you want. Um, the way to do that is you can uh, select data by the area you're looking at. So if you open the attribute table and you go into this upper left-hand corner, um, take a by attribute. You can choose the project name, the site ID, however, uh, you can also choose things spatially. I'm sure you know this if you use ArcMap a lot. So I'm equals, and then it's going to give me all the different projects. I can query out by the project I'm interested. Say, oh, one time. So then it will select everything from the project, and you can either export the data tabularly, which is where that primary key comes in that I talked about, or you can export a shape file and work from that. A local machine uh, exports the tabular data. You do it in the table. You go down to this export, or if you want to do a shape file, you go back to the layers list and right click on the layer you're interested in and data. And export that, and that'll export a shape file. I know this is a lot to take in, and I talk really fast. So, um, if you have any questions, please, please pipe in. Um, as I'm gonna move into it, move on to a different way that we can look at this data, or that we'll be able to look into this data through the geocortex site. But 
I just want to pause for a sec. Does anyone have any questions? Basically the same stuff that was talked about in January, you get to it the same way, and it looks the same way, just some of the indicators that are there are a little bit different. Um, this is Jason. Can I ask a quick question? Please do. Yeah, so I missed the first five minutes. I oh. apologize if you already addressed this. And I've I've only first heard of Teradat here about a week ago. So do you do a general introduction to what it's all about, where it's stored, how people get to it? I mean, just the general uh, actual understanding of what we're looking at. It, it may not have been very clear. Um, it's about, uh, so Teradata is just the national database that stores AIM data, so everything that folks collect in the field office and DEMA, bring it to the NOC and ingest it into an enterprise uh, database. Uh, so what you're looking at is the nationwide compilation of AIM data. Uh, it's served out then from our national database in what's called a feature service, or you can just think of it as a layer that you can bring into ArcMap and look at. Um, what's in each point is the um, actual indicators that are summarized. So instead of the raw data, you'll have, like for instance, total fire cover, bare ground, uh, perennial forb cover for each point. Um, and then you can open the attribute table and just look at the data that corresponds to your area. You can export it back out, like I've said. <laughs> Does that answer your question? What am I missing? Yeah, so, so like, for instance, in, in Alaska, we've been collecting data for the last three years, and I'm pretty sure, although you may be able to correct me immediately, none of our AIM data, um, based on the North Slope, the terrestrial AIM data are actually clear yet, and so if you're that is, that's correct, and that's because Alaska is a special snowflake <laughs> and has lots of different um, been kind of put on hold because we've been what everyone else dealing with sage grass on here. But one of the things on the list this fall is to kind of work with uh, the folks at the Natural Heritage Program to work through the different types of Alaska is collecting data in versus National Functional Group and do a crosswalk so that we can get the data in. Uh, it'll be really, really quick once we, that, once we have that conversation and get that all squared away. So it's not, uh, it's something that won't take long to get in there once we just make those decisions. So I don't, I don't distract from the overall conversation, but so what do you mean by functional groups? Uh, like in Alaska, uh, there's a big distinction among the different types of shrubs and that doesn't correspond exactly to what's been going on uh, with functional groups we look at here in the lower 48. Uh, so the data just looks completely different, and in order to bring it all together, we just have to have it look exactly the same. It's because you are, so like your, your layers are an invasive perennial forb or shrub cover, tree cover, you're saying it doesn't fit into one of those classes. Right, there was, uh, like Tina and I were talking, there's dwarf shrubs and sub shrubs and shrubs and then tall shrubs, and okay. <laughs> and, okay. and they're all really important. I saw that, but uh, we just haven't done the crosswalk into where they would fit yet. So you guys, so you're talking to Tina. That that was an important Yep. yep. Okay. I was up there this, this summer. I got it all. I got a layout. All right. Uh, Thank you. Anything else that I'm confusing folks on? This is Wendy. Yeah. I have a quick question. Um, has there been discussion about when or if the landscape monitoring framework information that uh, NRCS is collecting for us will be added to this or will be? That's an excellent question. So it will never be in this exact database, but we okay. are working really hard to stand up something that will look very similar. Okay. I have, have similar calculated um, indicators, so the data will be really compatible. They just won't be stored in the exact same data. Um, but we'll fit it out in the exact same way 
so it'll go on that page that I showed you on Geospatial Gateway. And that should happen sometime this fall or maybe early next spring. Um, the, the tier priorities was tiered at first and then LMF data second. So we're, we're hard at work on that front. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hi, Hi, Sarah. This is Melanie. Um, I have a question. I think I might have asked this in an email, and I wasn't sure if this was the at WebEx that was going to cover it, but is there a way to get, like, all the raw data? So, for example, if we wanted to look for where there's, like, only one species, like, if we're looking for scotch thistle, could we take all of our districts somehow, or is that in any of these... Um, and find that percent cover or just that the presence of them there, present or absent, um, is there a way to do that? I'm, we were not serving out the raw data. Our, our strategy has been that if you want the raw data that your DEMA is going to be the place for that. I will say, however, GeoCortex site, I'm going to demo here in a minute, we do have a tool to look at plots based on what species are in those plots. So stay tuned and we'll see if that covers your need. Otherwise, uh, you and I should talk about if we're missing, if we're missing what you need, may have how we could address that. Okay, because I just know that there's multiple like projects that collect aim in our district and so I go to them and just get their uh, DEMA and stuff but if it's not if it's not QAQC per your Teradet sections or whatever so I just because we're looking at and you know, for weed stuff too and stuff like that so I think I think around for the cortex thing okay. I think I think that's going to give you what you need and if not um, get you there okay cool thank you yeah All right, on that note, I think I'm going to transition over to Teradat, or the Cortex, sorry. Um, so, just a little background. Um, those of you who don't know, GeoCortex is the name of a program that we've been using here at the BLM for a little while now. It's basically a site builder that lets you ingest these services. So, in our case, this feature service is the exact same one that you would pull into ArcMap. We're just pulling it into a website, that, and we can create some tools within that website to more easily let you manipulate the data, look at the data, report on the data. Um, some of the cool things about GeoCortex is that it's not like a one and done. So what, what will be released, what I'm showing you, and what will be released later this fall is this but we have the ability to always be adding on tool functionality and we can really listen to what you guys think of it and uh, improve upon things or things that we're really hearing that are missing. So um, it's a cool program. It's a pretty cool site. Um, it's BLM internal, so um, it will just be able to be used inside the firewall. Um, when data goes public, we may have a conversation about releasing seen this site publicly, but for the near future, it's just going to be internal. Um, is this screen, I think, can everyone see the site? Yes. Awesome. So, the main thing is that under this I want to menu drop down, there's quite a few tools you can look at. Uh, there's some zoom tools, so I can zoom to areas offices, etc. within the BLM. We have lots of different options, topo quads, watersheds. Yes. Um, I'm going to go to a field office. Um, I just work you through this really easy to use navigation system. Um, I'm just going to go to one I know we have some data in. Um, so you have to pick a district. You could pick a field office or you could Creating a lot of you don't have to pick those and then you just pick next. It's going to zoom me in there. Um, the internet speed, these sites are uh, dependent on faster internet, so that's one uh, hold up. But if you're patient, it will always work. Um, I, I'm experiencing slow internet over here. Um, if you click on any of these plots, it's going to pop up with some information about that plot. 
Uh, I can view additional details and see all of the indicators within the plot. Um, I guess the other thing I didn't mention about the geocortex site, this is just kind of a tease of what's to come. It won't be available until probably October, early November because of uh, the release date of the geocortex version we need to have here. Um, so once, once I've zoomed in, I can look at the different points. I can export data. Um, Boundaries, um, run plot level reports based on boundaries, um, or draw a boundary myself on the map. Elliot, contact operator, please. Elliot, contact operator, please. Someone not on mute. <laughs> could, we, could just get everyone to put themselves on mute? Um, the tool is going to let me select. I can see it works. Some plots and run a report. This is right now, other than the species tool I'm going to show you in a minute. All of these tools are just different ways of looking at the same data that's in Terra or that could do an arc map. They're just a little more user friendly. As we go forward with this, we're hoping to add a little bit more complex functionality, but um, this is kind of what we're getting at now. So this is just a report of those plots that I selected, just the same indicator information um, in a report format. You can also, it's also selected those plots down here, and I can go up to this chart, this um, little line and export this. So I can export these plots, I can export them to a CSV or an Excel file, which would help in analysis. I can export them to a shape file, which is going to help me if I just want to look at this data on an, a map, but only look at the data in my field office. Um, the idea is that this is going to export this data with this primary key attached, which means that you'll be able to join. If you did this as a shape file, you'd be able to join that data the species level data I'm going to show you in a minute and really get a robust view of what's going on. Um, but I think, Melanie, that's where we're going to uh, solve the problem. So the species tool um, is summarize data area. I've already selected a boundary, so it's asking me if I want to just continue that boundary. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. It's going to then ask me which species I want information on. I'm going to say all of them. And it asks me for my email address, and it's going to actually email me an Excel file of the species summary for the area that I've selected. I did earlier so I wouldn't be burdened by the Internet. But it sent me this email with an Excel file attached, and this is the Excel file. Um, not exactly what it's going to look like. There's a couple fields missing right now, but this is basically what it's going to be. So the page is a disclaimer, then it talks about the species we're talking about, and it's going to give me a species summary for first hit, which is the remote sensing information, and then for any hit. So for each species, it's giving me percent cover on that plot for that species. Um, so you, don't, you have to work with this a little bit, but if you join this back then to a shapefile, you can filter out by where the sagebrush is zero, or plots where the cheat grass is not zero, or things like that. So it's going to be like a little different way to manipulate your data, and the species thing is something that we heard we're really interested in. So um, I'm hoping this will give you some more functionality. As this site comes out, I'll I'll continue to do these webinars and we can work through some of the things I was just talking about in a more detailed way. But um, yeah, this is what we're looking at. Okay. Yeah. This is Mark Coca, Nevada. So, with that species summary query, is that only available through the, the Geocortex site? No functionality as part of a GIS? Right. That is. Just say that you have to do this query, it's going to the Geocortex site and not through like an ARC-based 
clear. So yeah, it's just through the site. Okay. Thank you. Sarah, you could essentially you link it back into GIS with the plot key though, right? So you could yeah. just use it those yeah. Right. And for places like Nevada, like if you want to give this to GI, we could do that query for you and send it to you and it would theoretically be something you just have to do once. Um that are coming across like a too many plots times it out, so you need, really need to like look at your field office. But like I said, since it's like a one done, we could do it for each field office in Nevada, send it to you, and it wouldn't be too much work. And yeah, then you can link it up to the plots GIS and start going from there. That's great. what we're looking for. Awesome. Glad to hear it. Are there any other questions? Hey, sir. Drew Johnson, I have a question about um, accessing the underlying tables. Is that possible in any way, or is it fully restricted at this point? Um, the raw data, those tables? Yeah. Um, so, Teradot, no. Schema, yes. So if it's a localized project, you'll have your DEMA, but the underlying tables, no. And I guess for for your, it depends on what you need it for. Like, um, I'm curious why you would want those. <laughs> Just see if maybe we've got you covered already in some other way I haven't talked about. Yeah, uh, I guess we're just kind of starting the initial processes, but I was talking with Sir McCord um, about some of our SNR and looking at, you know, trend analysis of plots um, that we've done for three years now. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if that's something you guys are serving up, hopefully. So the data that's in here is the data from all years. So you should be able to go to your area and look at the plots and see the indicator summaries for each plot over the three years. And I think um, I think you'd be able to get trend analysis for that. I kind of doubt you'd need to go back to the raw data, but... Um, She's actually, she's going to be the one to talk to about if there's information that you can't get out of Teradat, going to DEMA and getting that same information. And then we can figure out ways to link DEMA data to these plot locations and start making it all talk nice to each other. But um, as you guys, I guess, continue that conversation, maybe link loop me and I can see what needs we're meeting. For sure. So Sarah Lamagna, um, and I totally appreciate everyone's concerns about raw data and that you have access to that. Our concern has always been that it's a really, really messy background. Uh, uh, even for us to make it as simple as we've done it in this feature service has taken a very long time and a lot of legwork. So to make sure that people understand how to join all of the related tables and all those sorts of things, that's why we haven't throughout the, the raw data, um, just because most of the time it's going to be extremely confusing for most people. So like Sarah said, if, if for some reason we're not giving you something that you desperately need, just give us a call and, and we can work work through that with you. And then if we have calls and everyone's looking for it, then it'll be sort of part of this service. Um, same why we have that species tools, because we realize that people are going to want to know about individual species. So, um, yeah, that makes sense. I guess the other thing I'd love to say is that we do, we are storing the data. It's, it is in kind of the back end of this enterprise database. So, if there were an, a need that could be met otherwise, we could we could build a query to query that out. It would be pretty complicated and, like um, you said, pretty messy, but I don't want to take any options off the table completely. So I have a question. This is with GBI. Hey. Um, is Geocortex going to be accessible to the public? And by the public, I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not for the foreseeable future. So uh -huh. as, as is a common BLM thing, <laughs> putting it out beyond the firewall is complicated. Right. Um, we like to stay in 
with Mark Coca, we'll be able we can shoot you some of these um, the the species summary for you uh, if you need it, and when when um, Teradat, we're we're working hard to make Teradat public. So when Teradat is public, then uh, you'll at least have access to the data. You won't have access to the geocortex tools, but you will have access to Teradat sometime soon. Right, uh, and you put together instructions for asking Teradat, like in a write up thing, correct? Yes, and as uh, we'll say, Lamani did a lot of the work, but it is attached to this email, which I also suspect you can't get to. But um, right. But well, I'm, I'm concerned about getting this for to range cons and the wildlife people at the individual districts, and since I can't, you know, since I can't get access to it, it's hard for me to do that. The, the instruction manual is really, really detailed, so I would feel comfortable with. Um, Mark or you or whomever, just sharing this invite, sharing the manual with anyone in the BLM who wants it, needs it, and with the instruction that if they're confused, give them all. I'd be glad to help them through it. Thanks. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm starting to grasp what you're showing, but can you just say again a real quick summary about the difference between what Terat slash geospatial component offers and what the geocortex piece offers? The fundamental thing to keep in mind is that they're both ingesting the exact same data, so they're different front ends for the same database. I think they're important, so it's different ways of looking at exactly the same data. What Cortex is offering us is um, like we've built in this species summary tool so we, we can clear the data by spatial areas and have a report of, for each of the points in those spatial areas, what the species percentage is. It's not something that we have done in Teradat, and it's not something that's easily gotten out of DEMA. So that was a real need that they was in, and Geocortex was the only way that Either way we could see to solve that problem. The other thing that Geocortex allows is just this, it's there, it's a website, so it looks a lot like what people are used to using. Um, you can export data straight from there. Um, for those who are not heavy ARC users, it might be the only place they need to go. Um, for those who are ARC users and want to look at the data a little more in depth, then they may go to um, the uh, the Teradat feature service in ArcMap. The caveat is that right now uh, Geocortex isn't available yet. Okay. And so, doing the <clears throat> kind of geospatial interaction, we're doing service by um, their interest. We'll call them. Mm -hmm. so there were some. You go to an area of interest. To show you just the data that are available for that area of interest, or does it summarize the bare ground, say, per that area of interest? There are no summers in it yet. That is, um, as anyone who has dived into AIM reporting and analysis will tell you, it's a really, really complicated issue. So that is kind of what Emily Kachurgis has described as her pie in the sky desire that someday we might be able to build in a like a poly, polygonal um, spatial summary tool into all this, but right now it's still just the plot level data, so bare ground at the plot, and so um, it show you the plots that are in the area of interest, but not any any for some reason than that. Okay. Any other questions? I'm going to move on. We've got more time at the end. The only other thing I wanted to talk about was you may or may not have heard of the Landscape Approach Geoportal. That went live on, I believe, a week and a half ago. Um, this is, uh, for any of you who have worked with RAs 
it's basically the data portal expanded. It's going to be a pricing one-stop shop for uh, all BLM data that is public, as well as there's going to be a component that's limited just to internally. So I just wanted to show you, we don't have an AIM tab yet, but this is another thing that's in the works. So you go to the page, um, you'll save this, and then it's going to take you to this data portal site. Um, like I said, our base has a tab, FIA, Sage Grouse, and there will be in the next six months an AIM tab. So when Teradat goes public, this will be where you go to get it. Um, let's go to it's, it's a pretty simple site. Um, you can search for data. The idea is that we needed a place for everyone, BLM and external, uh, combined to just go look for data. So in addition to having Teradat on this site, we're going to have some stat maps that we publish. We're probably going to have some reports that when they come out, we're going to have, um, and then we'll have created metadata, so there'll be good information on who created it, when it was created, all that kind of information. I just kind of wanted to tease as well. This site is live, and I think I put a link to this in the invite. Um, so if you need are your fiat data, <laughs> go look for it here. Um, I think this is going to be a really, really helpful tool for hopefully when the number of pages you guys have to go look at. We will, once this is live, we'll have a link to the GeoCortex site from our AIM tab, so you should be able to uh, go here. We'll have a link to the Landscape Toolbox site, which will have more of the background information. Um, so that's I thought this might be something that you guys are interested in and want to look at. So um, that, I think, was the last thing I had. Does anyone have any other questions about the landscape portal or about um, that or geocortex? It had made this a repeat call, one set for the end of October and one set for the end of November. Um, I will just share things with you, have a space for you guys to ask questions about about the geocortex site when it goes live, data in general, and I wanted um, you can share this to whomever might be interested in this data, especially with SageGraphs implementation coming up. I think a lot of people are just hearing about this stuff now. And feel free to call me, email me. I don't know everything about AIM data, but I'm getting there, so um, I'll be able to answer your question. 15 minutes if anyone wants to ask one now. Not a clue for joining me. Thanks. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you.